Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm Omar and today as much as it pains me we're not going to be talking so much about midnight right here but instead if we take a look here we're going to be trying to bring my 1997 Toyota Camry back to life. It's completely dead so let's see what we can do. Let's get to it. If you're new here we talk about Toyota RAV4 and Toyota related topics. If you're about that life, please remember to like this video, subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell so that you're always notified whenever we drop new content to the channel. So normally when you take your ignition key, right, and you put it on your ignition, uh, in Toyota Camrys, even these old, um, you would hear a beep going on that your key is in there on the ignition, that your door is open, but as you can see, nothing is happening. Then normally when you turn it, you would see all your lights, so basically all your dashboard would, you know, uh, a, lot of a lot of lights would come up, but as you can see, nothing is happening. And then, lastly, when I turn the ignition, you can hear that absolutely and see absolutely nothing is happening. If your battery is dead, you know, sometimes you hear maybe a clank or something, but I have no lights and no sound whatsoever. So this is what we're trying to figure out today. Now, normally my first instinct would tell me, hey, let's try to jumpstart the car using this jumpstart cables right here. However, I got a problem. If you look at my cars, look at where the batteries are in each car, they are on opposite ends, right? So they're not close to each other. And unfortunately, my cables aren't long enough to reach. So from here, the way I see it, I have two options. One, I could go to the store and get me a longer set of jumper cables, or two, I could disconnect the dead battery, basically just take it out, move it closer, so that now the cables that I have actually reach but there's a third option so the third option and this is what i'm going to do you can use your phone to request help through your insurance if you have a policy that gives you full coverage normally that coverage includes roadside assistance and part of that roadside assistance gets you help if you have a dead battery and you need for someone to come and have it jumped for you so in my case I have USAA as my insurance company, so I just click there. As you can see, I just go here where it says roadside. And it takes you to the main menu of your 24-7 roadside assistance. And in this case, like you can see in the USAA app, it says get roadside assistance help. So you can request for help through the app and you can just do it all electronically like this and you go through the whole process and they'll send someone to you. Or if you'd rather just speak with someone, you can just call and you can talk to them, tell them what you need and they will send someone over to you. Now, I personally like doing this because it is a service that I'm paying for, right? I'm paying extra every month to have a full coverage and to have access to this type of help they can come straight to wherever you are but not only that uh, the people who come help you they usually have a voltmeter of sorts and they can usually tell you the state of charge of your battery and give you a general idea if your battery is pretty old or what voltage is holding or if it's not holding voltage that way you'll know if it's time to replace your battery now you can also, at least here in the United States, you can just disconnect your battery and you can take it to an AutoZone or O'Reilly's or a similar store where they offer free services. They can either jump your battery, right? Or they can check the status of your battery to see if you need a new one. If And if you're in a pretty dire situation, you can just have them replace it right there. You can just buy it from them. Okay, so I submitted a claim through the app and somebody is already on their way to jumpstart the car. So we're just gonna wait for them to get here and go from there. 12 seconds later. All right, well, let's All see right, if this works out. Start. All right, let's try this out. Well, I see a light already. That's a, that's a good sign. That's more than I had before. Let's try this out. All right. 
Well, that was easy. Yeah. Can you can you tell the charge level of my battery with your thing, or? I can with my other box. I can bring it over here, and I can tell you if your alternator is working. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah that way, that way, I know exactly okay, what the issue is. Thanks, man. All right, there you go. Battery is only three years old, so it might yeah, be. Yeah, you're charging all the way. I'm charging all the way. Yeah. Okay. 15 amps. So that means the alternator's good. The alternator's good. Okay, it's just a battery, huh? It's a battery. All right, man. Thanks, Mike. Yep. Want me to put that hook down for you? I got it. I got okay, it. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mike. You have a good one. And we are money, guys. Everything's working inside. I have my suspicions that it's just a battery, right? And I'm glad it looks like that's it. Like you can see, it's purring just fine. Um, alternator is charging. This is, by the way, my original alternator. You can see there. But it is a Toyota alternator. So even though this thing is what? 25, 26 years old? It's still charging just fine. Um, I bought this battery at Costco. Um, and I guess I'll just give him a call and see if maybe I can get a, I can get a new one. He says there that it gives me a 42 month free replacement. Now, I thought, let's go ahead and still just do a little demonstration. Of how to properly connect your cable so that you can recharge a dead battery first thing you want to do is you want to take your positive end basically the red cable make sure that your cables are uh, copper right good and durable and you just look for the positive terminal on your donor battery your good battery and this is pretty easy because you can see I have a piece of red rubber here but also you can see the positive sign on the batteries almost all batteries have a positive negative sign to help you identify them so first thing we connect that red end to the positive terminal then you're going to take the other positive end and you're going to connect it to the positive terminal of the dead battery the one that you're trying to recharge now once both positive terminals are connected you're going to take the black end of the cable right and you're going to connect it to the negative terminal of the good battery the donor battery last you're going to take your other black end and instead of connecting it to the negative terminal of your dead battery you're going to want to find a very solid piece of metal under the hood and just connect it to there and i'm just going to connect it to here as you can see this is part of the body of the car metal very solid now why do it this way rather than connecting that black end to the negative terminal well according to scotty kilmer and basically any knowledgeable mechanic uh, there is a risk that if you were to connect that cable to the negative terminal if in the rare case that there was hydrogen gas in the air when you do connect that that's going to cause a spark and as you can imagine spark or fire and hydrogen it's a really bad mix so you might end up causing an explosion very unsafe so this is a way to ensure that that doesn't happen again that would be a very rare instance but again safety first now last thing to keep in mind if you're trying to jumpstart a battery that's really really dead it will help if you actually turn on the donor car so that the charging can happen a little bit faster and then you can let it charge five maybe ten minutes or so now if you do end up turning on the good car to let the dead battery charge make sure that you do not turn on the bad car at the same time you don't want both of them running at the same time with the cables connected why well because you're going to have two alternators working and again according to scotty kilmer that's going to end up frying or possibly frying a lot of electronics in either car so make sure that once you're ready to turn on the bad car to see if it starts make sure that the good car is not running anymore all right, everyone, so we ended up finding out what the cause of the problem was. Yes, it was the battery, but it wasn't the battery's fault. So Thanksgiving week, we left 
uh, for about the whole week we left town and this car sat in the garage and that little light right there that you see uh, on the panel was left on indicating that one of the doors wasn't closed all the way so with that not only that little light stayed on but our dome light that stayed on the whole time because I have it in the door position right indicating that there was a door that was left open unfortunately we did not catch that and that light just stayed on for about five six days straight so no wonder that the battery got completely drained now, even though the battery it wasn't the battery's fault it is old it is a three and a half year old battery and we had this car jump started and charged yesterday i drove it all day to make sure that the alternator charged the battery properly and at least now you can see that my lights come on right this is the on switch but look at what happens when i try to turn on the car nothing 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 right not even a click or anything so yes my battery is bad um i actually did end up taking it to autozone just to have the battery tested and i'm going to post a picture of what their meter showed yeah my battery is not looking good it says that it needs to be replaced immediately so i decided to call costco where i bought the battery to see if I could still get a new battery under the warranty. As you can see, I bought the battery on June 3rd, 2019. And indeed, they confirmed that the battery is still under that 42 month warranty. So if I bring the battery back in, they're going to basically refund me back what I paid for the original one three and a half years ago, which is, as you can see, $75. I will still have to pay the battery core fee of $15, but that's expected anywhere you go. So that leaves me a difference of $35 plus the core fee, that's about 50. And then after taxes, I figure I'll probably be about $60. All right, that does it for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it and that it was helpful to you. By now, you should know how to properly jumpstart your debt car's battery. Now, remember, if you're going to use jumper cables, just pay attention to that plus and minus sign on your battery. You don't want to mix up how you connect those cables. If you do, you could end up frying your entire car's electrical system. And at that point, you might as well just total the whole vehicle. It's gonna be way too expensive to replace. So just keep an eye out for that. Also, I hope that you learned a little bit about resources available to you, like roadside assistance, if you have full coverage through your insurance, or you can take your car or your battery to shops like AutoZone or O'Reilly like I did, and they can tell you if it's time to replace your car's battery. So please remember to share and comment on this video, and we'll see you on the next one. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell. We would appreciate your support. Until then, guys, thank you very much.